Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. So, in the past I have made a video back in 2019 on the 4% rule and explaining how it was formed. A man named William Bengen back in 1994 came up with the 4% rule. Well, guess what? He's actually retired now and enjoying his 4% and he realizes that he actually underestimated it. So we're going to talk about this article and you guys tell me what you think. This is uh, from Barron's Online. It says, the originator of the 4% rule thinks it's off the mark. He says now it could be up to 4.5%. Let's get into the article. Few people have shaken up the investing like William Bengen. In 1994, Bengen, who at the time was just starting out as a financial advisor, published a paper saying that retirees should start out withdrawing 4% of their assets annually and then increase their distributions each year by the rate of inflation and rebalance annual, annually, and their portfolio would last at least 30 years. So you guys, first thing that's important, if you're a fire person, the 4% might not be enough for you, okay? And as you know, there are people out there that say that 4% is too aggressive, but let's read on and find out what they say. So, Bengen's research, which became known as the 4% rule, is now one of the guiding principles of personal finance. Millions of Americans use it as a milestone for determining how much money they need to save for a long-lived retirement. In recent years, as interest rates have plunged, other researchers have estimated the safe withdrawal rate is now as low as 2.4%. So, let's take a look what it is. But Bengen who has continued to do research on this topic, disagrees. His original paper was based on just two asset classes, intermediate term treasury bonds and large cap stocks. So basically, you guys, tre intermediate term treasury bonds, which are guaranteed basically by the government, right? So middle two to six year bonds, maybe up to 10. And S&P 500 companies. He has since concluded that by adding the third asset class, small cap stocks, investors could safely withdraw as much as 4.5% annually. Now, you guys know south, uh, small cap stocks are much more uh, volatile than large cap stocks are. All stocks are volatile. Smaller the company, the more up and down it has. Bengen, 73 years old now, holds that view despite believing that the current stock market is overvalued. He has slashed the equity allocations of his personal portfolio in half. Nonetheless, he maintains that retirees will be able to keep pulling 4% plus from their portfolio as long as inflation remains subdued. Uh, we recently talked to Mangan, who retired in 2013 by telephone, and this is what his conversation said. I was a relatively new financial planner back in the early 90s. I was just starting to get clients who were baby boomers and developing an interest in retirement. And they started asking me two questions. First, how much do I need to save to retire? And second, how much could I withdraw? And I didn't have the answers to either question. So how did you settle on 4%? So I went through my research material and I got out some information on inflation about historical rates of return and just started cranking numbers. And it blew my mind away because it indicated in the middle eight, in the middle range, if your portfolio had somewhere between 40 and 75% stocks, then the withdrawal rate was the same, about 4 to 4.2%. I understand why people got angry with the rule. Oh yeah, I got some angry calls. I got some hate mail. A lot of people had been using higher or lower withdrawal rate. With, higher or lower withdrawal rates without any justification. Advisors weren't happy because they'd been telling their clients that they had to keep making more. And here was this freshman advisor coming along, doing some research and saying, no, it's not that way. Were you surprised it became the default rule of planning in the industry? To say the least, I did this primarily for my clients and the interest it has generated over the years has really astounded me. I never would have thought that 26, 27 years later, I'd still be redoing research on the same topic. People have done backward research on the 4% rule for every period, and it is held up. Yeah, after I did my study and published it, other people started doing studies. My greatest fear was that in the early years, that somebody would find a numerical error and blow my whole thing apart. 
but no, it was verified by research. That was very gratifying. So he didn't just pick a number out of clean air, you guys. He actually did some homework to figure out. But does the rule still work today with such low interest rates? This is the part that interests me. I've been watching the most recent retirees, and you really can't be sure because it's for a 30-year time horizon. But I've done studies of the 2,000 retirees, and they're doing well. They're successful with that withdrawal rate, even though they're in a low interest rate environment. I remain unconvinced at this point that the rule is inappropriate. I think there's a good chance of it continuing to work unless we get in a severe inflationary environment. So why is inflation so bad for retirement savers? I think a retirement portfolio is a balloon with two holes. One hole is the returns and the other is what you're taking out of it. And you like to have an even match. But if you have high inflation, if the amount you're taking out gets big enough, there's no way you can prevent the balloon from collapsing. So with interest rates this low, retirees are eating into their principal more quickly. Well, there's a counterbalance to that. And that is that we're in a very low inflationary environment. Withdrawals are growing at a much slower rate than any otherwise, than they otherwise might. Once you raise the withdrawals, you're stuck with it for 30 years. It's not like a bear market that comes and when it's over, you go back to normal returns. I'm currently allocating far less to stocks than I normally would be. I normally have a 50-50 stock and right now I'm only about 25%. I feel very uncomfortable about speculation in this market. The extremely high valuations and disparity between the stock market and the economy with the virus going on. Isn't this violating your own rule about keeping between 40 and 75% in stocks? Uh, my position is a temporary one, but the 40 to 75% average is what I'd likely maintain. I'm doing this because of short-term conditions that I consider dangerous. I'm hoping after this is over, I'll return to a normal allocation for stocks. I may even go higher than normal. So, what do you guys think? Here's the man who actually made the rule saying that maybe it could be higher. But he also goes on to say that he's concerned about the high valuation of the stock market, which pretty much we all are. He's also concerned about the fact that you're not getting anything on bonds, right? So what do you guys think? Is the 4% rule dead? Can we up it to 4.5%? Or is it crazy to think that that would be even considered with this low returns that were this low rates that we're getting on bonds let me know what you guys think in the comments put them down below let me know we'll talk about it all right you guys if you enjoyed this do me a favor give me a thumbs up if you're not already subscribed you know the deal hit the red button ring the bell all right we'll see you thanks